In this video, I'm gonna give you a YouTube tutorial on how to make a thumbnail, a good thumbnail, tips from me who's made over 4,000 thumbnails on YouTube as to tricks and tips I would use to make a thumbnail. For this video, we'll be using Photoshop. Now, since I mostly make thumbnails on game tutorials and game content, you might be making thumbnails on something like your personality, your vlogging, you know, something that you're doing that's different from game tutorials. But you can take all of these tips and push it across the board for making thumbnails of all different kinds. Instead of using like a game character, you will be using something like your face or an object or something that you're talking about, like a product in a product review. But first you need to get some shots or screenshots or photos of what you're going to be using for your thumbnail. That is part of the process too. Now, a lot of the time when you're picking your shot for your thumbnail, it's very easy to start on a much more difficult scale. It's very important to put composition into your shots that you take before you take it into Photoshop to, you know, make it all magical. Take the screen, for example, right now, there is a character over here. This is in a game called Ark Survival Ascended and the sun is behind us. That's mistake number one. You can see on the ground, the shadow is right over there. We'd rather wanna be, you know, facing the sunlight so that when we're looking at our character, the light is on our character perfectly like this. You're also gonna wanna make sure that the lighting in the game or in real life or whatever you're taking a photo of is well lit because nighttime thumbnails don't do well. If it's dark and you can't see anything, it just doesn't work at all to pull anybody's attention because there's nothing to look at. Whereas when you have the best lighting, everything looks fantastic. It's very eye-catching. Now, if you're a gamer, some games do have the ability to have like a photo mode where you can position the character and the thing that you want to display much more effectively. This is something I do for many of my videos, many of my thumbnails as well, is I will take up the right side of space, at least like 40% or 30% of the right side of the screen must be a character or an object. You can also flip this and do it like on the left. I just prefer to put it often on the right so that I can have my text on the left. My main reasoning though, is that every single thumbnail on YouTube, if you look at it, there is a big like block of how long the video is at the bottom right. So the bottom right of the screen, you don't really wanna have text or something there because it's gonna get cut off. The main goal of when you're taking a thumbnail is that something must pop more than everything else. Like you don't want too many things in the background or too many things that are fighting for attention. For example, if I go like, you know, this video is about rocks. You're like, uh, there's so many rocks. What am I, what, what is this? What am I looking at right now? Your thumbnail needs to kind of make sense, but it should also create curiosity, right? So there's this guy in fur armor standing on the beach. What is he doing there? What is, what is the point of this? If I could be like how to get, you know, diving gear in the game or something, you know, this would be a, a good photo to have like with the water in the background, something that tells a story, creates curiosity. Okay, cool. He's at the beach. He's at the water. He's going to do something there. You want your thumbnail to speak for itself. I mean, you know, the classic old saying how a picture is a thousand words. You want to use that to your advantage. So this is the shot that I'm going to use for today's test tutorial for a thumbnail, right? So I'm going to go ahead, take a screenshot here. Now, when you open up Photoshop, you're going to go to file new and you're going to make a new size. Now you don't want to go too big because you don't need massive thumbnails for YouTube. You also have to be careful not to go over two megabytes. Otherwise YouTube will not accept the file. It has to be under two megabytes in size. So for the width, I use 1280 and in height, I'll use 720. So this is basically 720p as you can tell. So it's 1280, 720 for height. Uh, the resolution is going to stay at 72 because we're using it for screens. And for the artboards, I always turn this off because I, I don't work with artboards at all. And then I'm going to go ahead and create this new, this new page over here. So this is our thumbnail page that we're going to be working with, right? But the thumbnail is going to be viewed at like, you know, this size on YouTube. So keep this in mind as you're working to constantly zoom in and out to see like, okay, cool. You know, like that, that's, that's visible. That makes sense. I can see this, this pops out or maybe that text is too small. Nobody's going to be able to read what that is. Keep those things in mind. Now you're gonna drag the image that you want to use into the background over here. So this image that we got right from our game, just like this, I'm gonna place it like this. You can actually change it if you want. If you wanna be like, you know, maybe I want it a bit more zoomed in on the character's face like this. This is completely up to you how you want to position it. I do this a lot. That's why when I take my photos, I kind of keep 
extra room on the left and the right like this so that if I do want the option to zoom in, I always have it instead of being like, oh man, I wish there was more open space at the top there. But there is a little trick for that and I'll show you in a second. So let's say I want to position my character like this, right? You see there's that whole open side on the left. I'm gonna show you in this video with the latest version of Photoshop how to get rid of that and actually make use of it, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead, confirm the selection. We're then gonna press the M key or actually just go ahead and go right over here on the left-hand side, you're gonna select the rectangular marquee tool. This is for selecting. So when you make like a selection like this, it makes a selection. You can hold control and D to deselect or you can go to select and you know use deselect over here. I'm kind of doing like a basic introduction to Photoshop here. Hopefully you guys have worked with Photoshop before because this will make it a whole lot easier. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is select this right hand side. I actually don't even like this rock over here with that shadow. I feel like it's too harsh. So I'm gonna cover this entire section just like this. And now we're gonna use the generative fill option over here. You should have this on your bar as per the new Photoshop update, the latest one. So we're not gonna type in anything over here. We're just gonna go generate. Essentially, this is gonna basically fill this part of our selection with what it sees from the other side of the image. So it's gonna be like, okay, cool. It's a beach, there's water, there's trees in the distance and there's clouds in the sky. Let's replicate this to the left. If you want something more specific, you can make the selection and say, you know, birds in the sky, you know, you know something on the beach, somebody with an umbrella on the beach. You can like add specific things, but that's like a whole different ball game. There we go, you can see it's given us our generator fill option, which looks fantastic. You can see we had this, it now turns into this very cool. We also get three options to choose from. I kind of like the third one because the trees don't look too, too like super weird there. It's done really nicely. I'm going to select these two layers over here. I'm going to hit control and E to just merge them. And this background layer with the white, I'm going to delete it by just pressing the trash can icon at the bottom right. I, I don't like the random layers. I, I'm super clean with how I do my stuff. Don't ask. It's weird. Okay, cool. Now that we've got the image in the position that we want it, we're going to go ahead and add some boosting things, right? So we're going to go ahead and click this adjustment layers at the bottom over here, this section over here, you're gonna hit brightness and contrast. This is something I always have. I always have a little bit of brightness, maybe 10 or something, nothing too hectic. You don't wanna be too bright, but thumbnails that are brighter and more colorful in general, always pop off and catch people's attention a lot more than thumbnails that are just like kind of bland. You know, you're competing with thumbnails that are like Mr. Beast level on YouTube. You want your thumbnails to stand out. You look at most successful YouTubers have very, very colorful, bright thumbnails. The contrast also helps a bit to make it a bit more cleaner. This, remember, you have to be looking at it like from this perspective. So you're tracking your thumbnail at this size. And for example, if I take off this effect that I added on now, you might not like see the difference as I was changing it. But when you look at it like this, there is quite a bit of a change, right? So it might be a bit too bright with that background. So feel free to adjust it. This is a very bright image, but sometimes you're taking a photo indoors and you might need more brightness. You don't wanna to go too crazy with it though. And often turn it off and on again to see if the effect is working the way you want it to. For the next adjustment layer, we're gonna go here to adjustment layers again, and we're gonna add hue and saturation. For this one, all we're gonna do is add the saturation up like plus five, just a tiny little bit. It makes the colors pop a bit more. Like I said, brighter, more colorful thumbnails do very good. So. All right, so now it's time for my secret recipe. This is something that I actually invented a few years ago when I was working as a graphic designer for a completely different scenario. And it's it's amazing. It's it's truly one of my favorite secrets that has made me like work with thumbnails and get like focus-driven content or like focus-driven thumbnails to direct people's eyes a lot better to certain things. So what we're gonna do is make an empty layer. So press this add layer option right at the top of everything over here. We're gonna go to edit at the top left. We're gonna go fill. Then we're going to go 50% gray. So we want 50% gray. And the mode doesn't really matter for how we're applying it right now. Click okay. We are gonna change the mode over here. However, make sure you have the layer selected and then go where it says normal or whatever it says here for you. And you're gonna go down to overlay. Now overlay is going to basically change the bottom layers underneath this one with what colors are on this 50% gray. 50% gray does nothing to everything below it. But if it goes more white, it becomes brighter. If it goes more dark, it becomes more darker. And from this point, we're gonna be using the dodge and burn tools, right? So that's this one over here. So you see here how it's demonstrated is like the dodge tool, 
brightens up this dog's face with the white, right? If I hold left click, you can see dodge is here, burn is here as well. We're gonna go with the dodge tool for brightening up. And typically I have this set to exposure like 10. So that's not too much. You need to change this because if you have a very high number, you're gonna be painting like with the sheer whiteness of, of <laughs> two, it's gonna be too much. So put a 10, I have range set to midtones, and I basically then just paint like this over the character's face. In this case, he's already very bright, but if your image is like a little bit more darker, like I said, if you're a person in a room and the you know you don't really have much emphasis on the, the person or the object that you want to be bright, you literally just use this to go over them, paint like that. You'll see on the layer at the top right hand side here, you can see it's like got the, the thing like, so if I actually show this back to normal, you can see this is what the gray, 50% gray looks like now. So it's nice and even, blended in. Of course, you do wanna use a brush, sorry. I should have mentioned the brush needs to be one of those soft round brushes. So it mustn't have any hard edges leaving like the solid lines. It must be like perfect to blend in. You'll notice the difference this makes when I turn off this layer now, you can see how much the character pops out in this case, right? So the character is now very bright. Here he was a bit more dark. Now he's like lightened up. In this case, maybe you wouldn't do as much as I did. And if you want to reset, you can either put the opacity down a little bit lower or actually just go image fill 50% gray to start from the beginning. Sometimes maybe just one little drawing of the, the, the dodge tool is all you need because you can get carried away very quickly. You can also make use of the burn tool to make other things darker. Let's say the background is too dark. I want the character to be more the emphasis. You can go ahead and you can draw on the background so that the character sticks out a bit more just like this. There's, there's tons of ways you can use these two things to, to create different types of effects. Like if I turn this off now, boom, you have like a completely different image. Like you can see the lightened character is on the right hand side, it sticks out, the, the left side is not as bright anymore and when you turn it off, this was default. This is what we had before. So a subtle change just like that, boom, just with lighting, just to change the focus of the image. This is my secret little technique that's, that's helped me with many of my thumbnails to kind of paint a direction of what I want people to focus on. All right, so now it's time to add text. Everybody loves adding text. I am, I, I, I mean, I make guides, I make tutorials. A text is like part of the, you know, I have to have it. Sometimes you don't need text for certain thumbnails. Sometimes you can use the character or whatever's on the frame to tell the story instead. But if it's a picture like what I have right now, it's like, what, what, do, like, what are we doing? We're standing on the beach in like the hottest outfit ever what are we doing here? You know, you need text to emphasize what's going on. So we're gonna go ahead and press T to basically use the, the, the type tool. We're gonna to click somewhere on the screen. You're gonna select a font that you like that works for you. I've been using the same font for, for ages from the Adobe Fonts Library because it's, it's thick enough. I like thick fonts that really show up for legibility. Don't ever use cursor for really thin fonts because if you can't read it, if you can't read it the, this size or like some people who can't read cursive like, like me, like I, I, I can't read cursive really, like to be honest. So when I see that, I just think it's like another language and I'm like, I don't know what that is. And I just, yeah, I look over to the next thumbnail. It's, so don't accidentally push your audience away because you made it too hard to read. So in this case here, I have white text. I'm gonna do how to make A. So that's the first line, right? So I'm gonna make it how to make A. I'm going to move it over here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click in the open space of the layer of the text layer, just to basically change the layer styles. And what we're gonna do is add a stroke to it. And on the stroke, we're gonna change the color to like not full black, but like a dark black over there, just like that. So it's not too, too much. So this is typically what I do. You can pick any colors you want. You can use any textile that you are comfortable with. This is just how I make mine. I have my size set to eight pixels, just like this, as you can see all the settings in case you're interested. You wanna make sure the position is on outside so that the stroke looks like this, otherwise it might look weird. And then we're gonna click okay. When you press control and the letter T, you can go ahead and transform it. And we're gonna basically do this. I'm gonna do this to show you a different trick in a few seconds, right? So I'm gonna go like that. Now, I think this black needs to be a bit thicker. I'm gonna go ahead and change the stroke of this to make it like 12, something like that, so that it stands out in the background. Now you might be wondering, but it's going over the face of the person, like how that's not gonna look nice. Now this is just to show you a cool little trick that you can use in the future for many different things. So. First, let's go ahead and make all the text we need. So right now I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna hold Shift and I'm gonna drag 
this text layer down so that I make a duplicate of it and also keep it in line. So it's just like that that I want. And then I'm going to go and change this whole text to the word thumbnail. So here I've changed the thumbnail text into a yellow with a yellow gradient. So if I go ahead and I look here, we have a white stroke around it at 15 pixels. We have the gradient basically from a yellow to like a, a darker yellow, but mixed with a little bit of orange so that it creates this kind of like, you know, instead of just like a solid yellow, it just looks a bit better. So for example, if I showed what solid yellow looks like, this is solid yellow, whereas the gradient will add a little bit more emphasis to like how it looks. It looks a, little, it looks a bit nicer with the gradient. And since this is our keyword, we want it to stand out. So we're going to be using an outer glow using the yellow. So if you look a little bit closer, it does have like a yellow glow in the background, as well as a drop shadow with these settings, as you can see on my screen over here too, if you want to copy these. Though I would recommend finding your own color style and your own like branding ideas that you want to use for your own channel. So now we want to hide the text behind the character here. For example, his face and hat is like, you know, it feels like he needs to be the focus, right? So we're going to go ahead, we're going to hold control. We're going to select all our text layers just like this. And we're going to press the folder option, which is going to group them. So we put them in a group and then we go press the add layer mask. So the layer mask option, boom, this is going to add the mask to the group just like this. Now remember, anything that is painted on white will reveal what's in this group. Anything painted in black will hide what's in this group. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have the mask selected. As you can see, it has the white rectangle around it to show that it's selected. We hit B for our brush. We press X to swap to the color. We wanna use black as the color. You're also gonna to wanna to use the hard round brush, the one with the very hard edges. And the reason why we wanna do this is because we want to basically paint over here. Now you can either do this with a selection method, which most people will probably tell you to do. I'm just, I like to have the free form of my hand, like paint this in myself, but you can always go ahead and make a selection and then paint in the selection to be super accurate. Now we used black to hide the stuff. Now we're gonna go ahead and use white by pressing X and swapping to the other color again to go ahead and bring out our white brush. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just paint around this character. And in most cases, you don't have to be super accurate because you know the thumbnail is being seen at, at this size. You, you don't have to be super accurate unless it shows really weirdly. You don't have to worry too much. Let me go ahead and finish here. And there we go. So this is basically what it looks like. Now, if I zoom out, this is the thumbnail. The thumbnail is complete. How to make a thumbnail. Now that the thumbnail is complete, all we have to do is go to File, go to Export, Export, a quick export as PNG. This is what I do all the time. And go ahead and save it on your desktop or wherever you want to use it. Go ahead and save it just like that. Give it a few seconds because the new Photoshop takes way too long to save files. And if I go right click on this, on this file and go properties, you'll see here it's 1.6 megabytes, which is under the two megabytes limit for YouTube. So this is perfect. And generally I've never, never had a problem with a thumbnail being too big for YouTube with, by using the, these settings and this method of making thumbnails. So if that is a problem you've ever had, that should be solved now. I hope maybe you've learned something, adopted something that the way I work through making my thumbnails has given you an idea of like, oh, maybe you can do this to give you ideas and inspire you and in how you can upgrade your thumbnail designs for your own videos on your YouTube channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching.